Greetings YouTube, it's JC and Piwacket here. We were talking and we decided that uh, we were going to make a video and show you the latest records. The Hey, that's not nice. Thought you were going to be nice for the people on the camera. She just likes to play rough. Anyway, this is the latest score of uh, records. Got a giant haul this week. Figured I would make a video for those of you who actually care to watch such things. Um, first album here is Mamas and De Papas from 1966. This is their first album called If You Can Believe Your Eyes and Ears. And it's a great album featuring the famous All of Them Sitting in the Bathtub album cover. And it's on ABC. This is an original pressing and it's in very good shape. Don Henley, I Can't Stand Still, which uh, was his first solo album after the Eagles broke up. And this is from 1982. It's in excellent condition and sounds better than my 1986 or so pressing on CD. Foreigner, Double Vision. This is their album from around 1981 or so. And it's also in very, very good condition. Billy Joel's Street Life Serenade from 1974. This is an album that came out before Billy Joel uh, was a, a huge hit artist. This is when he was still struggling. And some great tunes on here. Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, Night Moves from 1976. This is in very, very, very good shape. Sounds wonderful. Got a pair here, Huey Lewis and the News 4 from 1986. And before that, from 1983, his uh, big breakthrough album. Uh, this is the album called Sports. And both of those are in excellent shape. Genesis, and then there were three. The first album they came out with after... Uh, Peter Gabriel left the group, and uh, the only song that was a, any sort of a hit off this album was Follow You, Follow Me, which is like the last cut. This is a very long LP. It probably should have been split up into two LPs, but uh, they pressed it all on one record anyway, and it doesn't sound too bad. Another Genesis album, Abacab. Well, I was trying to keep these in order. But it didn't happen. Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, Against the Wind. Another great album from Bob Seger. This was about 1980 or 81, I think. The Best of the Love and Spoonful. Quite an interesting album here. This includes four full-color pictures of the group. And it's in this very nifty collector's bag. And... Uh, in good shape and uh, was purchased for much less than the uh, going market price of this record since it is very good plus plus has some good tunes on there too interesting album Joe Jackson Big World uh, this album came out about 1985 and what makes it interesting is the fact that it was recorded in front of a live audience in a theater in New York City but they were forbidden to clap they wanted the energy and spontaneity of a live performance, but they didn't want the audience to clap. And everything was recorded two-track. There was no multi-track mixing, and it was recorded straight to digital tape. And then they did a uh, direct metal master for the LP, and uh, sounds very, very good, as you might expect. Paul Simon's Greatest Hits. This is his first Greatest Hits album. Some pretty good stuff on here, and a very clean copy indeed. Now here's a very interesting album. This is The Beatles, A Hard Day's Night, the American version of the movie soundtrack on United Artists Records. This is an original pressing from 1964. The audio quality does not match up to EMI, but as a collector's item, it is definitely a very interesting album to have. This is the American version of A Hard Day's Night soundtrack. So uh, not only do you get um, most of the songs that are in the movies, there is uh, 
some instrumental versions on here as well, which are actually kind of strange to listen to. Uh, they're in the soundtrack of the movie, but you don't pay that much attention to them on the soundtrack. And they're the only things on the album that are in stereo. All of the actual Beatles songs are the mono mixes. Uh, the engineers did pan them a little bit to the left and the right for different musical passages to give a little bit of a stereo effect, um, but it is not the stereo versions of the song. Steely Dan, Gaucho, from 1980, an original MCA LP from that period in time. Been looking for that for a while. Weird album. I haven't even really listened to this. I played like the first couple of minutes of it. This is a bunch of remixes of Crosby, Stills, and Nash songs. So the songs are actually familiar, but uh, the, the uh, versions are very different, and they have instrumentation added and extra vocals. Strange record. It's called Replay. One of my favorite bands that very few people remember these days. This is the Power Station, which is a super group made up of uh, half of Duran Duran, Robert Palmer, and Tony Thompson, who was the drummer for Chic. Also, uh, he drummed on uh, Madonna's Material Girl album, the Like a Virgin album. And... Uh, he played on many big records in the mid 80s and so this is a very interesting supergroup called the Power Station they had a couple of hits here in the uh, United States uh, in 1985 big sound saw them in concert it was the loudest concert I ever went to good stuff Billy Joel songs in the attic from 1980 81 actually was when this came out this is a uh, live recording this is one of the first albums to be mastered completely digitally, and uh, the LP sounds very, very good, um, but because it comes from a digital master, you're just as well off with the CD, I guess, and unless it's a remastered CD where they messed it up. It's worth having the LP, though, for the, the inside pictures. It's a very fine-sounding record, too. More Genesis. This is Invisible Touch. The album is in really good shape. Unfortunately, there's a defect, and uh, so about 30 seconds into the first song, uh, Invisible Touch, it, the needle just moves over. There's a place on it where it didn't get pressed properly. It, it wouldn't show up on the camera. I wouldn't show you, but it's kind of weird. It's like it's got a ring around it, almost like it got uh, double-pressed or something, and it was hot, and it crushed the grooves out. More Billy Joel, An Innocent Man, from 1983. This is the second copy of this I have gotten uh, in the last uh, two or three months. The first copy I got got destroyed by accident. Long story. Here is uh, Barry Manilow's Greatest Hits. This is a Greatest Hits collection from around 1979 or so. And this is where that disco version of Copacabana comes from. It's on here. And then every version of Copacabana released after that has been the disco version instead of the original single. More Barry Manilow. <laughs> this is Barry Manilow 1. This was his first record for uh, Bell Records. This is not an original Bell release. This is the Arista re-released after the album Barry Manilow 2 actually became a hit. But it's the same record. It's just on the Arista label. This is a sealed, unopened um, version here and I haven't got a chance to listen to that one yet. Here's another Barry Manilow to wrap up the set. Barry Manilow, One Voice from 1979 and the best song on here is a song called Ships which is uh, one of my very favorite records and this is also sealed. This is the fourth Barry Manilow album that I have been able to pick up on LP that was still in the plastic, still in the wrapper. And I don't know why, but it seems like the market is just flooded with uh, Barry Manilow LPs that were never opened. It's almost like there's a warehouse somewhere, and <laughs> and uh, they found a bunch of them, and they've made their way out into the collector's market. So there you have it. That's the big record haul. Uh, over there. Got them last week. Spent a whole evening cleaning albums, and I've been listening to them ever since. So thought I might share that with you guys. JC, Bad Edit Pro, waving bye-bye. I'll say goodbye for Pie Whack at 2. She likes to listen to the records. She's wanting me to shut up and actually, like, play some music now, so I guess I'll do that. Talk to you all later.